the next coach. What do good coaches do? Not the bad ones, right? Not those bad coaches. Good coaches, they motivate. You can do this. I know you've got this. You have everything that you need. Go parents, go. Uh, I think this is so important for parents. Parents need somebody that's going to show them what they could have if they do this. What does it what does it mean for their kids? It means so many good things for them if they stick with this and stay the course. Good coaches create a team. So one thing that you could do is to help your parents know that they don't do this alone, right? So if what we're going to talk about as a congregation is uh, acts of service, we could throw that out for our families. We're focusing on acts of service. And here's some ways you could do acts of service at home. Again, referencing the videos you're gonna get. That's one of the three minute chunks is some uh, acts of service practices. You could pick one and say, you know what? As a church, we're all going to do one of these acts of service practices. Uh, and we will come together and share our experiences, talk about how it went, uh, Everybody send in your picture of your money jar that you have at your table. Tell us where you're putting the money that you're raising. It's a team environment. I recently did a, a panel discussion with a number of people through the Atlantic School of Theology. I don't know if it's available as a recording, but one of the panelists was Stephen Argue, who is on the uh, Fuller, does the Fuller Youth Ministry stuff. And he said something that really stuck with me, and I think it is true, that when we have children on the younger end of the spectrum, babies in particular, there is this culture with parents around wow, you know, parents, baby parents, like, let's get together and talk about this. Like, how do you feed your kid? And like, how do you, what's the bedtime schedule? What do you even do? How, I don't even know anything. And faith formation leaders help with that. And we have parents of young children groups and so forth. And then he was arguing and offering that as the older children get the less of those resources there are, and parents begin to sort of self-isolate and they don't get together and say, my teen is having X, Y, and Z behavior or issue or question. And they don't realize that everybody else has that same exact issue. Maybe not, kids are all different, right? But there are common threads and that we can adopt that beginner's attitude with our teen and tween parents. So that's just a little um, gift from, thank you to Stephen for, saying that in that way, I think that's an important thing. And then good coaches teach the fundamentals. You know, we don't, we can't have faith just sort of absorbed through osmosis. <laughs> like they'll just hang out in the church and they'll get it. That's, that's maybe how we teach the basics of some of the facts or theology of our faith. But when it comes to faith practice, how do you learn how to pray? How do you learn how to listen to God's voice? How do you learn to give alms? We learn by doing it and having little practices. So that is your role as a coach is to teach the fundamentals. I deliberately did not put teacher on here because I think that we have an a too much of a Sunday school model. I could go on that tangent some other day, but I'd like you to think of it as, as a coach or over and above a teacher. The one that I put as the opposite hand that I think we often fall into the trap of doing that I'd like you to get off of your uh, label is that of cruise director. <laughs> you don't have to be a cruise director. You don't have to plan the activities, bring in a band, all of these things. There, again, is a time and a place for that. But if you feel like a cruise director, I would encourage you to wonder if uh, why you think you need to do that and uh, if there's a way to gently change. No shame in that. I've been a cruise director and I still am in a lot of the time. 